The Clone Stamp tool is one of those tools that's been in Photoshop for years. And since Adobe added the Spot Healing Brush, Healing Brush, and Patch tool, I do find I use it far less than years ago. But there are some situations where the Clone Stamp is the appropriate tool and best tool for the job and the only one that will get it done. Here's an example. I could make a quick selection of this missing area, and I could try Edit, Fill, and Content Aware, another one that made my stamping needs less frequent. When I click OK, it did do a decent job. It filled with information from the photo. But if you look at the right side, this window should only have three columns, not four. So I'm going to undo this and deselect, and I'll point out what I've done first. Then I'll explore how to use the Clone Stamp tool. So in this image, it was actually stitched together using Photo Merge. And when it was stitched together, I happened to catch somebody cleaning up outside with a bucket. There was a door that's open. And you'll notice I removed the guy outside, I closed the door, and the bucket is gone. There might be traces that it was there once. The shadow's a little bit of a giveaway. But if you look carefully, you'll see the gold doors really cast a yellow shadow also. So your goal should be just to learn the fundamentals of the clone stamp tool. And after time, you can master it. So let's start with a light introduction. I'm going to grab this image of the statue light and I will choose Window, Arrange, Consolidate All. So this is our primary image. I can hit S for the Stamp tool, that's how I remember it, or click the Clone Stamp tool. And there is no way to use this tool without at least one keyboard shortcut. The easiest way to illustrate what it does is to copy an entire object. So in this instance, I want to make a second version of this statue. And to start, my brush size is very tiny. I'd like the brush about as big as this star. So I'll dial the size up until it's a little larger than the star. I'm getting there. There we go. And I'll click my safety area to deselect. Now the Clone Stamp tool will sample a portion of an image and paint that in somewhere else. In order to sample what it's going to copy, I will hold down Option on the Mac and Alt on Windows. And I'll click once. Now you could see the star is loaded into the cursor. But as I move around, nothing is being copied yet. It's just giving me a visual preview of what I've selected as my source. And this is important. The distance I move away should be as large as the distance of the statue, because that's what I'm copying. So I may go a little further away just to be safe. And as soon as I do this next click, after my initial Option click or Alt click, this next click is the most important. No keys required for this part, but when I click, I have now set what it's copying. And as I drag, I always say, you have to watch two birdies. It's copying the arm, but the brush is large and feathered. So if you look on the original statue where it was, you'll see a plus sign moving around. That's your second birdie. I notice a lot of people get caught up on just watching their brush, but right now I can see the plus sign is in the cheek of the statue. If I move down, it's into the belly area. If I move right, it's towards the other hand. But I didn't get the shoulder, and it's OK to let go. I do encourage you let go many times while cloning so you have undos. Because if I mess it up in the very last swipe and I spent a few minutes doing this, I don't want to have to start all the way over. But now, as I watch this birdie, there's some huddled children on the right of the statue. 
I'm at the child's head, so you'll notice the sky is changing tone and color. As I move down, I've got the arm, but I have to be careful not to go too far right or I've just copied the edge of the photo into the original spot where the statue was. So I can undo or step backward and it stays aligned. I just have to be very careful around this little child until everything is copied. So that's my favorite way to illustrate how the clone stamp works. You duplicate an entire object and get used to watching the two birdies, the round cursor and the plus sign where it's copying from. Now I'm going to choose File, Revert, and not save the changes, and I'll show you another trick on the Clone Stamp tool. If you choose from your Window menu, Clone Source, there is Width and Height, you could offset the position where you clone from, and you could rotate. So if I wanted to make a mirror of the statue, I could click the icon next to Width, which would flip horizontal. I'm going to click that and move over to the star the same spot, and I'm holding down Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows, and I'll click once. As I move away, I'll go far enough away that I don't cover up the original hand. You'll notice it's an inverse image. So now I can click and drag, and this time the plus sign is moving away. As my hand and mouse go left, that plus sign moves right until I'm creating, in one big swooping motion, a whole copy of this statue inverted. And I could go all the way up and pick up the light from the sky, but I have to be very careful watching that plus sign to make sure nothing else is removed. And then if I collapse Clone Source, that's a really interesting image. In fact, I forgot the foot. It's okay, I can just continue to paint until everything's painted in. But let's take a look at this on a more complicated image. And I won't do all of what I've done. I'll just give you some guidance. In fact, I cloned this portion here and down here to make it simpler for you to complete this exercise. But if I zoom in with Command Plus or Control Plus, it remembered what I sampled from the previous image. To close the door, I'm going to lower my brush size, but I want it large enough that it fits in the corner. And in my Clone Source panel, I still have Flip Horizontal on. So I could start at the upper left corner and hold down Option or Alt and click once. And really, it's upper right corner of this door. But what I'm fixing is upper left on the open door. I visually line them up, and when it looks perfect, I click and drag down to close the door. But I have to be very careful. My plus sign might get a little too close to that bucket, so it's important to let go. And I did pick up a little bit of that bucket, so I might need to undo that and try not to get too close to that yellow spot or lower my brush size. There we go. So to fix the bucket, I actually took this whole pole and replaced it because the pattern was different here to here. So I held down Option or Alt. I clicked once. I moved over and lined up the top edge and painted down. And if you're off center, you undo, move back over, hold down Option or Alt, line it up again, and then click and drag down. And I won't finish all of them, but to remove this guy, I held down Option or Alt and sampled this plant, and then lined up in the planter that spot so I'm cloning from the opposite side. The tree is tricky. You have to figure what you're going to keep and what you're going to lose. And on the windows, I held down Option or Alt, and I made the brush size bigger than a window itself 
So if I zoom in with Command Plus or Control Plus, if my brush size is big enough, I can line up the window. Then I do my first click and drag to fix it. So you'll see my end result in this theater end. But with enough practice, you can get very good at the clone source, remove distracting objects, create balance, and get your goal for the image by drawing the viewer's eyes to important information in the photo or compelling parts of the photo and choosing what is removed and what is kept and Clone Source, along with the Clone Stamp tool, gives you the power to do all of that.